Anastasia, Book 1, Chapter 17, The Brain, a Supercomputer, The Possibility of Building a Flying Saucer, greatly interests me. If one examines the principle of propulsion, propulsion just as hypothesis, it is still a new one. A flying saucer, however, is a complex machine and is not a high priority item for us earthlings. For that reason, I wanted to hear something that would be understandable right away. I wanted a something that did not require any investigation of scholarly minds, but could be immediately put into practice in our daily lives and benefit everyone. I began asking Anastasia to come up with a solution to a question that our society was being confronted with today. She agreed, but asked, could you at least put it in more specific terms? This question, how can I solve something when I do not know what you have in mind? I began thinking, what was the number one problem we face today? And the following terms came to mind. You know, anesthesia, our major cities right now are confronted with a most acute problem. Environmental pollution. The air in these cities and these cities is so bad it's hard to breathe. But you yourselves are the ones polluting it. We realize that. Please hear me out. Only don't go philosophizing about how we must be pure ourselves, have more trees around and so forth. Just take things as they are today and think of something. For example, how to reduce the pollution in our major cities by 50% without costing the treasury, the government, that is any extra money. And make it so that your plan would be the most logical of all possible alternatives and that it will be capable of instant implementation so that I and everyone else cannot fail to understand it. I should try at once, Anastasia replied. Have you specified all the terms? I thought I should try and make it even more complex just in case her mind and abilities really turn out to be truly superior to what our own powers of reasoning allowed. So I added, and make whatever you think of to be profit generating. For whom? For, for me and for the country too. You live within the borders of Russia, so make it the whole of Russia. Are we talking about money? Yes. An enormous amount of money. Profit, Anastasia. Well, money is never an enormous amount. But I need enough money to be able to pay for this expedition and have enough left over for a new one. And as for Russia, I thought for a moment, I thought, what if Anastasia were even a little interested in the material benefits of our civilization? And then asked, you wouldn't want anything for yourself. I have everything, she replied, but all at once an idea came to me, something that might possibly interest her. How about this, Anastasia? Let's have your plan. Make enough money to provide free seeds or at least seeds at a discount to all your beloved Dashniks or gardeners throughout Russia. Terrific, Anastasia exclaimed. What a wonderful idea. If you have finished, I shall now get to work. How delightful that sounds. Seeds is, or is there anything else you wish to add? No, Anastasia, that's enough for now. I felt her inspiration and excitement, not only over the task itself, but especially over the fire, the free seeds for her Dachniks. Yet, I still felt convinced that even with her special abilities, a solution to the problem of air pollution was simply out of the question. 
else are many scientific institutions would have come up with one long ago. With a, with a bustle of energy this time, not her usual calm and quiet self, Anastasia lay down on the grass, her arms wide spread, her curled fingers reached their cushion, cushion tips upward, alternating between motion and stillness, while her eyelids tremble on her closed eyes. She lay there for about 20 minutes, then opened her eyes, sat up, and said, I have determined the nature of the problem, but what a nightmare it is. What have you determined, and what's this about a nightmare? The greatest harm is coming from your so-called automobiles. There are so many of them in the large cities, and every one of them is emitting both an unpleasant odor and substances harmful to human bodies. The most frightening thing is that these substances are mixing with earth or dust particles and impregnating the dust. The movement of the automobiles picks up the impregnated dust and people are breathing in this horrible mess. It gets swept into the air and then settles on the grass and the trees covering everything around. This is very bad. It is very harmful to the health of both people and plants. Of course it's bad. Everybody knows it's bad, only nobody can do anything about it. We have street cleaning machines, but they can't keep up. You, Anastasia, have discovered absolutely nothing new. You haven't thought up any original solution to purify our air. All I did just now was to determine the basis source of the danger. Now I shall think about it further and, uh, and analyze it. I need to concentrate for a long time, perhaps as long as an hour, since I have never dealt with a problem like this before, so that you will not be bored. Do you go for a walk in the forest or you get on with your thinking. I'll find something to do. And Anastasia withdrew into herself. Coming back an hour later, after a walk in the forest, I found her, as it appeared to me, in a state of some discontent. And I said, you see, Anastasia, you and that brain of yours aren't capable of doing anything either. Only don't worry about it. We've got a lot of scientific institutions working on this question. But they, just like you, can only describe the fact that pollution is going on. They haven't been able to do anything about it yet. She answered in somewhat apolo apologetic tone. I have gone over in my mind, I believe, all the possible variants, but I do not see any way of quickly reducing the pollution by 50%. My mind was at once set on the alert. She had found some sort of solution after all. So what kind of reduction do you come with? with? Come up with, I asked. She sighed. Not that much. I managed to achieve, to achieve 35 to 40%. What? I couldn't help exclaim. Pretty poor result, eh? I asked Anastasia. A lump formed in my throat. I realized she was incapable of lying, exaggerating or downplaying anything she said. Trying to restrain my excitement, I said, Let's change your terms of the projects. Let's say 38%. Quick, tell me what you come up with. Your automobiles must be equipped to not only scatter this foul dust, but to collect it as well. How can we do that? talk faster. Those things sticking out in the front of the automobiles, what are they called? Bumpers, I offered. All right, bumpers. Inside them or below them should be attached a little box with small holes facing frontwards. There should also be holes on its backside so that air can escape. While the automobiles are in motion air laden with this harmful dust will be drawn in through the front holes, purified and then escaped through the back holes, and that air will already be 20% less polluted. And what about the remaining 20%? 
white. Now virtually none of this dust is removed, but with this method there would be a lot less of it in the air, since it would be collect all over the place every day. I have calculated that in one month with the help of these little box, boxes, if they are fitted on all automobiles, the amount of polluting dust will decrease by 40%. Beyond that, there will be no reduction since other factors are at work. What size of boxes and what should they contain? How many holes and what distance from each other? Flatter me, perhaps you would like me to personally attach them to every single automobile. For the first time, I perceived that Anastasia had a sense of humor and I began to laugh at the thought of her attaching her little boxes to all the cars. She laughed too, <laughs> delighting in my cheerful mood and began whirling her way across the glade. The principle was really very simple. The rest was merely a question of logistics. Already without Anastasia help, I was beginning to imagine how it could all be. Orders from ad administrative heads, motor vehicles inspection control, turning in old filters for new ones at filling station, a system of vouchers and so forth, a routine regulation just like seat belts. All it had taken back then was one stroke of the pen, and presto, seat belts in every family car. And here too, one stroke of the pen, and again presto, cleaner air, and there would be tough competition among entrepreneurs for orders, for orders to supply the boxes. A good idea of work for the manufacturing plants, and the main thing, of course, cleaner air. Wait, I said, turning once more to Anastasia, who was still whirling around on a storage stance. What should be put into those boxes? Into those boxes, into those boxes, you will come up with a little something. It is very simple, she replied, without stopping. And where is my money going to come from? And to supply seeds for the Dutchniks, came another question. She stopped. What do you mean? Where from? You wanted my idea to be the most rational of all. And that is exactly what I have thought of. The most rational solution there can be. It will spread to large cities throughout the world. And for this idea, they will pay Russia enough to supply the free seeds and enough to pay you. Only you will receive your payment under certain conditions. I didn't pay attention immediately to her remark about the certain conditions, but began focusing in on something else. So we could, we could, so, so we should patent it. Otherwise we would pay off, we would pay off their own free will. Why would they not pay? They will pay. And I can even set the rates right now. From the production of these boxes, Russia will get 2% and you will get one hundredth of a percent. What's the good of your setting the rates? You do have a few strong points, but when it comes to business, you're still a complete ignoramus. Nobody will pay volunt voluntarily. Even when there are signed agreements, they don't always pay. If only you knew how many, th how many there are in the world that don't. Our arbitration courts are overloaded. By the way, do you know what an ar arbitration court is? I can guess. But in this case, they will pay faithfully. Anyone who does not pay will go bankrupt. Only honest people will prosper. What will make them go bankrupt? Don't tell me you're in the racket business. What are you imagining now? Think about it. They themselves, or rather, circumstances themselves, will overtake any cheaters and make them go bankrupt. And then the thought dawned to me on me. Given that Anastasia is incapable of lying, and as she herself said, the system inherits and nature do not allow her to make a mistake. It means that before stating any conclusion, she must have processed in her brain an enormous amount of information, made zillions of mathematical cal calculation, and taken into account a whole mass of psychological characteristics of the people who would be participating in her project. In our terms, she not only solved the most difficult question of purifying the air, but also drew up and analyzed a business plan. And all that in roughly an hour and a half. 
I thought I had still better clarify certain details. And so I asked her, tell me, Anastasia, you made some sort of calculations in your head, figuring out the percentage of pollution reduction and the amount of money to be realized from the sales of your car accessory boxes, filter replacements, and so forth. Calculations were made in the greatest detail and not just with the help of the brain. Stop. Quiet. Let me tell you what I think. Does this mean you could compete with our top-of-the-line computers? Let's say Japanese or American computers. But that is not very interesting, she replied, adding, that is primitive and somewhat degrading. Competing with a computer that a tenth amount to your, how can I find you a good ana analogy? That is tenth amount on, on hands or feet competing with their prosthetics. And not even with a full, pros full prosthetics, but just part of one. With a computer, the most vital element is missing. And that most vital element is feeling. I started to argue the opposite telling how in our world there are people considered very intelligent respect in society that play chess with computers. But, but when this and other others' um, arguments still fail to convince her, I started asking her to agree to do this for me and other people as a proof of the possibilities of the human brain. She finally agreed and then I made the invitation more specific. So I can officially announce your willingness to take part in a problem-solving contest with a Japanese supercomputer. Why a Japanese, Anastasia question? Because they are considered to be the best in the world. Well, now it would be better if I do it with all of them at once so you will not have to ask me again to do such a boring thing. Great, I, ex I exclaimed enthusiastically. Let's do it with all of them. Only you have to think up a problem. All right, Anastasia reluctantly agreed. But for a start, so as not to waste time on thinking one up, let them try solving the problem you put to me earlier and see whether they confirm or refute my hypothesis. If they refute it, let them put forth their own. Let us be judged by life and by other people. Great, Anastasia. Good for you. That is most constructive and how much time do you think should be allowed for them to come up with a solution? I think the hour and a half you took will not be enough for them. Let's give them three months. Three months it shall be, and I suggest the judging be left to anybody who wants to take part. If there are a lot of judges, then no one can influence the outcome for their own ulterior motives. So be it but I would still like to talk with you, you about raising kids. Anastasia considered the raising of children paramount and would always delight in taking about, talking about it. She wasn't particularly excited about any idea of competing with computers. However, I was very happy to have secured her cooperation. Now I want to invite all firms producing state-of-the-art computers to join a competition to solve the above state stated problem. I still felt I had to clarify a point or two with Anastasia. And what prize should be offered to the winner, I asked. I do not need anything, she replied. Why do you think just of yourself? Are you so absolutely, absolutely certain you're going to win? Of course, I am man after all. Well, okay, what can you offer the firm who takes first place after you? Well, I could give them some advice on how to perfect their prim primitive computer. Then it's settled.